Hi. Some of you may have received Vasco da Gama version 5 or 6 with one of the Magix products. This tutorial will show you how you can use your Vasco da Gama to create a travel route animation and then bring it into Movie Edit Pro for post-processing. The little animation that we're going to make is rolling across the screen right now, so take a look. Other programs used in this will be Google Earth and Shara Photo Designer. This is an alternative to using the Travel Route Animation Wizard that's available in Magic Movie Edit Pro. You'll see with Vasco da Gama there are a lot more features that can be used. The first step is to get a map. So I used Google Earth, but you can use another mapping program or if you have a map available, you can use it instead and bring it directly into Vasco da Gama. I've got the map on the screen zoomed out to show the area that I want for my entire route and I've also tilted it a little bit. Now save it so that you can open it and share a photo designer or another photo painting program. I've now opened the photo and share a photo designer. In this step I want to create a background that resembles the surrounding area of the image that you see on the screen. In this case it's kind of a greenish color water and we'll try and get something that resembles that to bring it into Vasco da Gama as our background. Create a rectangle and give it the dimensions of 1200 by 1200 pixels. Now we want to find a similar color to the water and so use the fill tool and then the color picker and go around and find a color that will satisfy you for now. There are other ways to do this and it can be fine-tuned but for now this is what we'll use. Then save this as it will become the background map on the globe in Vasco da Gama. Now the next thing you could do is fix up that image get rid of any logos, any text and make it prettier or go get some other maps and uh, stitch them or make a panorama. Open Vasco da Gama to create the animation. Take a look at the settings. You can adjust them the way you want and also take a look at the total length that's there. You can adjust that right now to get started. Once you accept you'll see the globe come up on the screen and what we want to do is we want to import that background image, get rid of the map of the earth, and just make it that kind of greenish color that we have. Select the green background, open it, and you'll see it makes a rectangle on the screen on the earth. Stretch out that rectangle to cover the entire earth. And then after that, with a slider at the bottom, make it opaque. Select that and it will import it into the memory of Vasco da Gama. Now the next thing we want to do is go and get our map. So we do the same process. We want to bring that map in. Now you see the rectangle on the screen. This time resize the map to make it smaller. To keep the proportions hold down the control key and use the left mouse button to resize it. Don't make it too small or you won't be able to zoom in on it. Move it to the proximal location on the earth where it should be and then straight down towards the equator and try and drop it about mid-screen. Make it opaque then click on OK and it will create your map. Next you want to show both of your maps on the screen. So you first select the background map, bring that one in, then you select the terrain map and you bring that one in. Now you see the globe with your mask on it but the sun shining brightly through it. So you want to turn off the sun effects by going into the object effects FX, and turning off the sun settings. We now have the greenish background but we can't see the map. We turn the earth around until we find our map and we line it up in the middle of the screen. Zoom in on it until you've got something that you can work with. You can see on the left hand side when I slide the map over you can see the background image that's kind of greenish. Doesn't really match up with that patterned water but it's better than, than having blue. Click on the start button to get the first point on the route and then you can move it over to the location that you want. Then click on the root button and you can just place all of your points along the root at the intervals that you wish. 
You can zoom in on these later in order to fine tune where you want them and you can adjust the route, add in other points along the route. Our next point will be off the screen so what you want to do is turn off the little button that you had to mix the points and then you can pan over and then go back, turn it on and put in your last points. I've zoomed in on it here so you can see a little bit of the fine tuning that you can do. Uh, you can do much more than that. Let's zoom out now to see the entire route. Now part of the planning process is figuring out how you can present this when you get into Movie Edit Pro. So I want to introduce some pauses at the beginning, at the middle waypoint where a picture is going to show up, and at the end point so that we can zoom back out. I'll insert a pause at this waypoint here where I want a picture to pop up, and then another one at the lighthouse at the end. As I said, this is part of the planning process so that you've got something that you can work with. You can even split the video when you get into Movie Edit Pro and uh, run a slideshow or some video. Next I want to add some text at the various waypoints. So I'll add in some text that says chalet and I'll uh, run it around the house until I find a good spot where I want to sit it and I'll tilt it up a little bit and I'll go on to the other waypoints and do the same thing. There are a lot of different effects that you can do with these. You can have them pop up, hide, fade, fade in, fade out, etc. For brevity I won't show all of these but I think you get the idea. And I'll go to the last point and I'll add in Lighthouse and move it around, resize it to get the effect that I want. Now I'm going to go back to the first point and what we want to get is an object that goes along the line. So we'll go into the objects, we make sure we're on the header object and then we go into the database of the program and select what we want to travel along the route. In our case, I want some walkers. The walkers next come into the program and you'll see they're far too big, so I resize them, move them way down on the scale, and then I tilt them over a little bit so that we'll be able to see them instead of seeing straight down on their heads, we'll see them from the side a little bit. Now I want to add in an object at the starting point. In this case it'll be the chalet or a little house. So I select the objects, not the head object, but the other object, and then I go into the database and select my house. And I resize it so that it's not so big, and I tilt it over a little bit so that we can see it from the side. You can see there's a little bit of playing around with the sliders to get the effect that you want, the right size, location, etc. Now we'll go to the last point, to the lighthouse, and we'll do the same thing. We'll add in our lighthouse. You'll notice the line type is just a solid yellow line, but you can have dash lines or objects on the line. Then we'll reduce the size of the lighthouse, move it around to the location we want to get it at, and we'll tilt it over so that we can see it like we did with the chalet. You'll notice we haven't saved yet, so this would probably be a very good time to save the project. Now back to editing. The next step we want to do is set up the camera angles. When we click on the camera button, it creates a series of keyframes with images along the route. Now what we have to do is go and decide what we want each of these points to look like. Select the first point and go in and zoom in on it, uh, rotate it, tilt it, whatever you want in order to get the image that you want. Uh, you may want to set this up to give an overview of the entire route at the beginning and then because we allowed a, several seconds at the beginning you can have it zoom in by using the next keyframe. You'll notice that I click on the little button at the bottom there for the camera. This saves and changes the image in the keyframe to be whatever it was on the screen. Then you can copy these and go to the next one and paste the settings so that the image changes to what you had before. Then you can move it slightly, zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want, the uh, effect that you want. And you keep going through the entire route like this. 
Now if you go back and you do any changes outside of the camera part, for example, you increase the length of the route or you add in more pauses or more points, then your keyframes are going to be messed up a little bit and you'll have to go back and reset them. One of the problems that I found is that when you get to the end, you may not have a keyframe at the end point or very close to the end point. And what we want to get is just maybe a second or two before we get to the very end of the, the video or the animation. We want it to be zoomed back out so that we see the entire route. And then we'll have the little people fade out. So in this case, I drag that cursor bar right close to the end and I go about a second or so back and I'll see that I don't have a keyframe down below. So I can insert a keyframe right there and set up the way I want my video to end up. And I think this is just about right. So I'll save my last camera viewpoint. Then I'll just save my project. I don't want to lose that. And then we'll go to the little button down at the bottom and preview the result. For brevity, I've cut out a little bit here so that we don't take the entire 20 odd seconds to see what we saw at the very beginning. If you like the results, great. If you don't, you can go back and do some fine tuning. Right now, I'm going to go back to our walkers and I'm going to do a fade effect so that they fade in using scale. And then I'm going to go to the very end and I'll do the same effect but have them fade out. Then I'll go back and I'll preview the result. And you can see our walkers zoom in and take off along the road. The only problem is they're now off the screen. And that's the result of having done some modifications and having the, the walkers zoom in. It had a little bit delay at the beginning. So now my camera shots are out of sync and I have to go back and reset the camera angles. This is part of the fine tuning process. Make sure you're completely happy with what you've got because the next step is to export it. You'll see on the screen the various parameters. I save it to a WMV type file, but you can save it to an EVI with the settings to give you the quality that you want for when you bring it into Movie Edit Pro. Depending on the length of your animation and the effects and the file type that you selected and the parameters, it could take uh, quite a while to export the file. Now that that's done, we're ready to go into Movie Edit Pro. Open it up, either create a new file or you can bring it into an existing project that you've been working on. Drag your file from Vasco to Gamma onto the timeline in the location that you want. And accept the adjustment or don't accept the adjustment depending on your setup. And then what we want to do is start adding in various elements to our movie. For example, we want to start it off with a title. Now we go to the point in the animation where we want to have a pop-up photo appear. Drag the selected image onto the timeline and adjust it so that the start is approximately where the walkers pause. Next, go to the movement effects and resize the window so that at maximum size it's going to be just the size of the image that you want. Then drag the image around until it gets to the position where it should end up at. Now I'll shrink it down into the bottom left corner and then I do some keyframing and I have it zoom up as the walkers go by. Now in the final image that you saw at the very beginning, I added in a mask, an oval type mask. It has a nicer effect. And I have both the oval and the photo zoom up at the same time. Now we'll do the same thing close to the end of the video where I want the lighthouse to pop up. And I drag in the lighthouse image and position it and give it the size I want. 
and do a little keyframing so that it goes from the zero size up to the final size. Now of course you can use all of the other Movie Editor Pro uh, features like putting in intros, outros, or adding in your photo albums or your movies at the end or insert it anywhere you want. And right now we're pretty much done and we'll take a look and see what we did. And I think it looks pretty good. You can see the entire animation at the beginning of this tutorial. Right now I think we're finished. Don't forget to save. Bye-bye.